Jill, very significant indictment. What jumps out to you? There are so many things that jump out. The first is how detailed the emails are in terms of what was said and how foolish it was for Roger Stone to lie about them because he had to know he had created those emails and had received those emails and yet he went and blatantly lied to Congress saying I have no emails that connect me to Russia. There are none. He denied all of those things that are right in front of our eyes now in this indictment. So you can't read it and not conclude that he is guilty of those crimes when they say he lied about them. And of course the most horrible thing to me as a dog lover is his attempt to intimidate the witness by saying I'm taking your dog. That's that being terrible. person two uh, who we've interviewed here as Randy Credico and who was According to Mueller, they look at that as a serious tampering uh, to intimidate him out of t truthful testimony. With regard to criminal exposure by the Trump campaign, what passage to you is most significant in this indictment? Well, of course, the passage that says that a senior official pressured Roger to do something and that they, that was at the direction of someone above that senior official that they did it. So who is that person that's referred to in paragraph 12? And that has to have been possibly the president, possibly Jared Kushner, possibly Don Jr. Those are the ones that could have been high enough up to be above a senior campaign official. Seth, uh, as a prosecutor, uh, not everything that is alleged is formally charged as a crime. Do you view this as an indictment that is fundamentally about obstructive activities, full stop? Or do you view it as obstruction with the implication of attempted collusion? Well, I think it's the latter uh, for certain. You know, this is obviously on its face an obstruction indictment. But of course, Mueller's mandate is the collusion between the Russians and the Trump campaign to influence the election. So if we pre presuppose that there was this quid pro quo, an offer of dirt on Hillary Clinton in exchange for a promise to reduce or eliminate sanctions, for example, the way prosecutors look at this is this would be additional overt acts in furtherance of that conspiracy. In other words, the, inner, the two uh, principles, the Russians on the one side and the, and the Trump team on the other, distanced themselves, didn't want to have their fingerprints on the wrongdoing, so they used intermediaries. And, and that's the way prosecutors look at this sort of thing. Also, it can be evidence of consciousness of guilt. The GRU clearly has the ability to send out a bunch of emails, and Trump or one of his colleagues could have called the Russians and said, hey, why don't you guys get this stuff out into the public? They didn't do that. They used intermediaries. That can be evidence of consciousness of guilt. It can also be overt acts in furtherance of a conspiracy. And, and, and Seth, again, on the law as a prosecutor, and I'm going to get to our, our very other qualified guests, but on the law, I wonder what you think of the passage that Mueller includes, and he emphasizes that Stone wasn't just gossiping or making big random requests. Uh, but right here on page seven, what struck me as so damning was Mueller including that Stone was explicitly trying to find certain emails on Clinton dating back to 2011, asked for that to be relayed as a question, like a document search, to Assange. And allegedly person two then passed that on and it was there was BCCing to make it real. Why do you think that's in there? That that doesn't strike me as something that he needs to prove tampering, for example. Well, it surely doesn't, but it shows proactive coordination. It shows affirmative steps, overt acts that are taken to facilitate a potential underlying crime. And because it's being done at the direction of people within the campaign, potentially the highest levels of that campaign. So you're talking, you're talking conspiracy. Correct. This is all conspiracy law. That's exactly right. And of course, under conspiracy law, the actual completion of that conspiracy doesn't need to take place for it to be criminal. It may have been carried out and successful. The election may have been tampered with, but even the efforts to undertake wrongdoing like this is criminal in and of itself. Let me bring in Bill Crystal. And Bill, uh, I hope you'll forgive the analogy, but sometimes here on the beat, you have been uh, like a father to us on a long road trip. Uh, and so I ask on, on behalf of some of us in the audience, some of us who've, who've relied on you in that role, uh, are we there yet? No, because I think we need to still see the full scope of the conspiracy. But we've, we've come a long way. And the fact that, as you put it well at the beginning, the Trump campaign was in the loop uh, with the Russians through Stone. That seems to be alleged and pretty well established, presumably, by these documents. Is it plausible that Donald Trump either didn't direct this or wasn't knowledgeable about the direction of the 
uh, effort to get Stone to find out more about these illegally obtained documents, that seems extremely implausible to me. So I'm going to assert, as a matter of probability, that Donald Trump was in the loop on the effort to get the Russians to help uh, his election prospects by releasing the emails. Whether there was an explicit quid pro quo, whether Trump was enough in the loop to be legally liable, I, I defer to, we don't know, and I defer to the lawyers about exactly what the criminal liability would be. But on the fundamental political question, I don't mean political in a partisan sense, but in the broadest sense of politics, I think we know that Donald Trump was happy to have Russian help and was in, uh, in the campaign and knew that people beneath him very likely knew that people beneath him hmm. were in touch directly or indirectly with agents of Russia to help uh, release uh, uh, whether they well, to, to at least release these illegally obtained emails. Sam, look, it's a difficult day for a lot of us that have been around uh, Trump org that worked around uh, Trump. They're going closer and closer now. You look, they have Roger. Michael Cohn, Manafort, you have Alan Weisselberg in Southern District, who is not being represented by the Trump legal counsel. Uh, it's something where you could see that along with the political, I tell you this as a, as a you know, Republican, that this deal that the president accepted today, that it's in a pretty perilous situation. It's a situation that many of us wanted him to avoid, and that's why we were trying to get him to run on impeachment at the midterm. Does Ari, it look, Ari, can I just add one thing? Yeah, one thing I'm going to bring you back in, but one thing while I'm with Sam. Does it look to you like the noose is tightening around the key political leadership of the Trump campaign? Look, I, I've had to follow this closely, and I've discussed this with you off, and you can see the narrative that they're building, and every indictment gets closer and closer. I assume through that, I don't want to discuss my grand jury testimony, but I've discussed questioning that uh, it's pretty, they have a narrative and they have a way. I mean, we're here with a Watergate prosecutor. It looks like this is, you know, it, it looks like you're getting to Watergate here. Did you know uh, that Roger Stone was making such explicit uh, searches and seeking Assange to sort of try to nail Clinton in that way? No, no, I did not. Now that you know that, does it make it look to you like your former mentor was trying to collude? Was he was he trying to collude? I think he was. I don't think he did. As I said, I think he conspired against himself. Would he have? Would he have gone? Look, I can't speak for him, but maybe he would have. But I don't believe. But once again, I don't believe that he did. However, that does but not. But you believe tonight uh, that this adds to the evidence of attempted collusion? I, I, I believe that once you look at the indictments, yes, we've gone from Russians, Russian military to uh, uh, campaign people. Now we have direct uh, contact. Bill? Very close there. Yeah, I mean, I just, one point Jill made that it seems kind of crazy for Stone to have lied to Congress on something that was so obviously discoverable and would end up being uh, proven, presumably, that he lied. Yes, but what if the strategy was, and what if this, well, what if the strategy was better to delay than to uh, uh, admit everything early on, and if you can drag things out for a year and force the prosecutor to find all this evidence and then go to court and then delay in court and stuff, you end up perhaps dragging it through the whole first term and perhaps you get pardoned. I really do think that I, Stone's not a fool, Manafort's not a fool, they may be getting bad legal advice at times. I think they're, they are acting so as to drag this out as much as they can, so President, so hope they are hoping there isn't an impeachable uh, moment here for President Trump. And the Trump makes it through his first term. He gets elected. or He doesn't get reelected, uh, and then well, they that, get part. And then they get pardoned. I think pardon is central to the Matterford and Stone. Right, uh, and that and that theories. goes your your uh, analysis there, and you followed it closely, Bill. Goes to the way that Manafort is accused of continuing to try to help Donald Trump even after he claimed under oath that he was going to cooperate and flip. Uh, and Sam, you look at the way that the special counsel did that dramatic morning raid. Uh, I'm going to read from their explanation of why they mm -hmm. say it was lawfully necessary. They believe that the disclosure of the indictment that was going to be public and related materials on the public record prior to arrest would have increased the risk that the defendant, Roger Stone, would flee and destroy or tamper with evidence. Uh, do you think that was a credible concern of theirs? I, I, I don't believe so, but I also... You don't think Roger would run? I don't think Roger... I, I don't believe Roger would run. I don't know. And I don't, I'm not going to say he would obstruct justice once the FBI was coming or he was arrested. What I would say is that... Um, is that 
Aaron Zelinsky was the one in the uh, courtroom today in Florida. Mueller who, prosecutor who Mueller interviewed prosecutor, you. Interviewed me, interviewed all the other Roger Stone associates, and I find that what they did not include yet in this indictment is is ominous as somebody who's still skeptical of a circumstantial case, if it is, of removing Donald Trump from office. What did they not include that you're saying they could include later? I'm saying they have not included who Stone spoke to in the campaign. They have not named the names. They have not, and of course they have not said whether or not he directly had contact, nor do I know if he did. With right, you're not saying you know, but you do know how it worked. Roger Stone was your mentor, and you were a direct I'm saying, aide I'm to saying, Donald Trump. I'm Hold on, that, I'll let you finish. Yeah. And you were, are speaking to the fact that your reading of this is that they may identify and make actions against that small number of potential people in the future. I, I think that they're making a case that this... We haven't got to the transition yet. We haven't got to Trump Tower in Moscow. We haven't got to what was going on, meeting with Russian bankers, with Kushner. I think that this is coming... To a, uh, to a form. Well, Jill, you listen to an individual who, as I say, is linked to both Stone and Trump uh, saying that, who's been in the grand jury room. What does it say to you? Well, I think listening to Sam, number one, why wasn't conspiracy included? Because there could have been a general conspiracy included. But in terms of the destruction of evidence, I think that you needed the FBI to go in unannounced because destruction of evidence. He might not flee. He may even enjoy the attention he's getting. But he's, he's charming, but he would not be above destroying the evidence. Right. And he knew there was evidence. So you had to go in there without saying, I'm coming in tomorrow. Right. Uh, we're going to bring in a, a member of the House Intelligence Committee on all this. So Sam Nunberg, thank you thank for coming on The Beat on this big breaking news day. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here. Or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.